the amount of scatlers, guys. Nga ringa, nga, nga luma, Cape Town. Hello gorgeous, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for clicking on my video today. My name is SEK and this is SC in real life. I would really appreciate it if you clicked on the like button and the subscribe button to just help me grow my YouTube and just make my dreams come true. Now, Sana today, as you can see, I'm, I'm giving crackhead, I'm giving crusty. I'm giving musty and dusty. I am looking a hot mess. Basically, what I'm gonna be doing today is killing two birds with one stone. I wanna undo these braids. I'm gonna be undoing my braids and giving you some gossip. But I wanna just do that while just unpacking some of the tea. There's been a lot going on lately. There's a lot going on. Let's get right into it, baby. So as I get right into this, uh, you know, I'm doing my braids. I actually wanted to talk about some story that I saw on TikTok. That was so disturbing. Like, some guy was basically talking about how, um, well, he has a confession page basically on, on Facebook. And he was talking about someone who confessed to basically killing people, né? But not your ordinary killing people, like murdering people. It's more like some type of scheme that they set up. So I've got the story on my phone and like when I saw it, it really shook me. I want to read it out because I've got the confession right here. Um, I can like post a link to the video so that you can see it yourself. But when I read it, I was so shook because I'm just like, hey bro, guys, South Africa Moss is a movie. South Africa is a Netflix special. Every day, happily, happy, beckily, beckily, there's always something happening. Yo, I, I, sometimes I wonder like, is this real? Are people just trying to be like saucy and make up stories? I'm gonna read out what the confession says there. So the person confessing literally says this. This is my confession that left everyone's jaw dropped at church today. I confessed my sins. A fellow sister told me to even write it here so the world can see. I'm still shivering and scared and I can't even handle this pain writing this. There's a lot happening in and around the world that we know nothing of. And today I decided to break the ice and tell you at least one inhuman thing that keeps happening every day and I'm part of it. I don't care about... Ooh, I will add the, the, the snippet way they're talking. The confession just... It's read out by like an AI. And then we can react to it together because like it was so shocking. This is my confession that left everyone's jaw. Dropped at church today. I confess my sins. A fellow sister told me to even write it here so the world can see. I'm still shivering and scared. I can't even handle this pen writing this. There's a lot happening in and around the world that we know nothing of. And today I decided to break the ice and tell you at least one inhuman thing that keeps happening every day and am part of it. I don't care about those who will judge me and call me names after stepping out of church. Today I knew I'm a new person. In 2017 I got employed by a breakdown car tow company. Our work is simple. We only show up to accident scenes, take the crushed cars to our site and later give them to their owners in exchange for cash in case they will want them thereafter. Most of the time we sell these cars to scrap yards especially if the owner doesn't show up for more than a month. If the owner doesn't show up, we know very well we'll make more money. The scrap yards pays better than the people who comes after two days seeking their cars and only give us our 500 for keeping it safe. And sometimes we have to share that money the three of us. Obviously we work for money. And we always wish the owners don't come looking for the car. But other people love their vehicles and would come even if the car crushed beyond repair more especially if the owner wasn't part of the car accident. They always come to claim their cars back as they are. So we park our touring car by the side of the road each day. Most accidents happens at night so we make sure we are always near the road with most car accidents history. We are always there, always watching. The other night we saw a lot of oil on the tar road. It looked greasy and brownish. As we kept looking at the oil a Mini Cooper came in a high speed. That's the day I first saw a car crash and become so tiny that you can't tell it's a car. That was a terrible accident and the driver came out in pieces. The car drifted so badly and lost control immediately after hitting the oil spot. The road was closed and police, ambulances occupied the scene. We did our work anyway, 
took the crushed car sold it in two days, because we learned the driver was the owner we knew there was no one who could come looking for a car crushed in that manner. The next night we waited the whole night and there were no car accidents. For three days in a row there were no car accidents. I hate saying this but we somehow loved it when there's a car accident. Don't get me wrong, no accidents, no money for us. The other night one bought a lot of oil. We intentionally split it on the tar road, myself and my colleagues. We then waited on the side. Not even 10 minutes later we already had a terrible accident. That's how we started making traps to cause accidents so we can get money. Yes I feel bad but unfortunately, that was the only way. The only way to survive and support my family. We started putting oil on different roads, and every night we won about six cars. Most of the drivers died on scene. I saw children, grannies, pets, women, and experienced drivers dying from this traps every night. We made more money, and we never wanted to stop. Only cars that drove in a high speed always crushed. Only drivers who were driving below 100 km per hour survived. Motorcycles, taxis and trucks always fell into our trap. That's when I believed. Speed kills we caused so many car accidents that I can't even count. Many, and we made a lot of money. I even bought myself a car. I hate to say it but someone's pain is someone's happiness. The body you cry for going down six feet is the same body a mortuary worker will be joyful to see injuring his workplace because he knows that means money. The same sickness you cry hard for to be healed. There's a doctor that prays you don't get healed, so you keep coming to him for healing. You think the sangomi you give money to for your every problem wants you to be free and have no problems. We'll talk about that some other time. I stopped this work on the 4th of January this year. This is after we made our normal trap, and we hit a taxi. In the taxi it was three passengers and the driver. The next morning when I got home my mom, sister and my wife were not home. That's when I later discovered they got involved in a car accident. Around 2100 hours at G7 Road, on their way to Florida Hotel. My wife was taking my mom out for a weekend away celebrating mom's birthday. My sister tagged along since she's a friend to my wife. My own plan to make money took all three people close to my heart. Happiness turned into pain. I confessed because I don't see myself continuing doing this job. I quit. That is so crazy to me. I really wonder what company this is. Like, it really makes you think because I have been in, in some car accidents. What am I saying? I've been in like one well driving while i was driving and of course i was not at fault but when the accident happened do you know those tow trucks those towing companies that will be the first at, at the scene they'll be the first ones there and obviously um they try and take advantage of the situation they try and take whatever they can they like you know they know that you're shook and like you're vulnerable so they're gonna like do whatever they can to like make sure that they take advantage of either you know the situation trying to take your car so that um, in the moment you don't know what you're signing up for, you know, you don't know what you're getting yourself into and you end up having to pay them a whole lot of money. But this story has me shook, like actually causing the accidents. That's a wild theory, but it would make sense because some accidents are just hard to explain. Some accidents are really like, you just don't know how they happened, what caused them. Um, some people might say speed and negligence, but sometimes it really, you know, this is a very believable thing. and. Yeah, I know, when I first saw the story, like, I was just really heartbroken. Wow, just treating people like a, a cash, what do they call that thing, cash cow, J, like a J, a means to make money is just so insane. And imagine it's one of your family members that ends up going out like this because some people decided to turn people's lives into a business. It's, it's just crazy. Everything in me hopes that this is not true. Um, but if it is, God God will judge those people. Like, honestly, God will have his way with those people. The fact that this man, would he have stopped had his family not died? He literally lost his whole family. You know, the only reason you stopped and the only reason you're confessing is because it happened to you. So I it's just a movie in itself. But like, damn, I that was a first for me. I believe. Let me know what you think of the story below. Like, please comment down below. I want to do a story time ne? about um, an experience that I had at a club here in Cape Town. And it, yeah, it was it was quite a skypa. It was quite a movie. Uh, but I will make a separate video for that story time because, wow, there's a lot that came out of that. But yeah, generally, it made me, it had me thinking about friendship and like, 
friendship in Cape Town especially oh my gosh friendship in Cape Town is a myth baby it doesn't exist there are no real friends and I won't just say in Cape Town but I think generally I wanted to talk about how how hard the journey to to friendship is especially in your 20s friendship it will show you flames friendship will show you flames I have a friend right well, I have several friends and I'm not gonna mention their names the first friend um, was someone that I had met in Joburg I met her before I moved to Cape Town she also moved to Cape Town she moved to Cape Town before me so um, yeah she came here to work about some six seven months before me and the whole time during her move and after her move I was still in Joburg we would like talk every single day over the phone video call like I was offering her support because she has no family in, in Cape Town so I gave her all the support just trying to be there for her then in July you know around my birthday I decided okay let me come to Cape Town and come visit my friend and also just have a good time right so I did that then I came back to Joburg I felt like I was really keeping up with her and like maintaining the friendship I put a lot of effort into that she was like my closest friend at the time after I moved to Cape Town in September I think she had moved in May and I moved in September after I had moved to Cape Town uh, she literally ghosted me essentially stopped talking to me um, she was someone that would text every day and we would talk every single day even on those video calls we were on like five hour video calls I mean literally sitting like chilling you know like when you set, set up your hubby or a glass of wine and like we're literally sitting and talking up until like the early hours i also wanted her to feel comfortable and just give her that support she needed because she doesn't know anyone in cape town i'm all the way in joburg i'm still your friend so i'm still gonna do that friendship thing by the time i moved to cape town she decided oh no like she's going through too much in life like life is so hard there were several occasions where i tried to invite her out or um you know try to meet up with her and she would just be like no like no i can't come sorry no you know and like her excuse was always just not being in the right state of mind which i completely understand if you're not if you're going through something and like mentally you're just not ready of course i understand but the part that i don't get is as your friend you're not telling me what's happening and i asked her i'm trying to like emotionally support her she's not telling me what's going on and she's not talking to me she's not trying to meet up with me essentially that's ghosting right live live drive ghosting me i cash up left her i said whatever i'm moving on because i really i don't do shady you know it's either you are or you off your heart or you cold if you don't want to talk to me then i'm not gonna bother you like i'm gonna that heck so eventually after the whole ghosting period now it's getting to yo three months four months five months six months later she decides she takes me and i've been in cape town for like six months now it's like my eighth month in being in cape town so she eventually says yeah like we need a meet up and talk you know and you know i know i've been distant i'm so sorry that i've been distant i'm like you think you never once gave me an opportunity to understand why you were being distant why you were doing that and to me that's not true friendship that's not a true friend someone that can take up all your time and take all your support all the support and friendship that you offer she was receiving everything i gave her but when it was time for her to give it back to me honey she was not there i moved to cape town i had zero friends i came to cape town thinking that oh my friend is there it's fine i've got a friend i'm good ah i got to cape town baby girl was tired of me and i essentially had no friends i had no one so i was very very that was a very lonely time for me it really did hurt me sham i it hurt me and i feel like i the reason i didn't fight her or confront her on it at the time was she knows what she's doing but some people don't pour back into the people that pour into them and that just yeah it made me realize something about friendship is that you need to be very careful how much of yourself you give out and how much of how much you pour into others because when you feel empty and it's time to to have you know your friends pour back into you and they don't you will feel your worst i inherited the heart that i have 
from my mother like she's super generous and like kind and everything so I fear that if I'm not careful with the friendships that I you know invest myself into and the people that I pour into I will end up just being surrounded by takers and you don't feel valued you don't feel seen and that can really take you to a dark place so yeah friendship for me friendship is, is not a real thing Shami. it's not something that I want to consider as like a big part of my life anymore because wow like friends have really done me dirty I am very content and comfortable being alone because once you make your friend your life Sana when you start going through the most when you start going through the most and that person doesn't show up you f you feel 10 times worse I promise you I really look like a crackhead I look like I would take your bag right now I need to tell you guys I don't know if this page is still gonna be up by the time this video is uploaded listen if you're from Cape Town or you travel frequently you might know the social scene so there's names that have been dropped on this other page on Instagram it's like a full-on gossip slash confession page go Instagram hi guys the files that are being dropped the people and these are people several of them are ones that I've seen live I've seen them I know them I know their names I know them through mutuals and the things that are being said when I tell you the amount of issues in Cape Town, hi guys, hey bo, <laughs> there's so many problems in Cape Town. So that name of that page is something like Cape Town Unfiltered, something like that guys. Don't say I sent you, but oh my goodness, the things that are being dropped there. So if you're from Cape Town and you want to see Nellas, like check that page out, Sana, you might see someone that you know there. And then also, if you live in Cape Town, uh, I've got a great warning for you. If you drive, if you use r300 um if you use some part of the n2 uh i don't know the exact routes because i'm from Joburg, so i'm not very familiar but i know that i only stay on like the upper part of n2 and like m5 i don't really know all the cape town freeway freeway routes um like off the back of my hand but i have heard of the ones i guess the most risky ones where a lot of Incidents have taken place, so I would really urge For anyone that is new to Cape Town or anyone that drives in Cape Town to just be careful because I've seen so many stories um, of Incidents people being hijacked in broad daylight people literally being um, mugged stopped smashed and grabbed They are doing all kinds of things, but there was a lady literally Who got like hijacked mugged? They did all sorts of nasty stuff on the freeway, my goodness. Because her tire burst and it was as a result of these people, these criminals, throwing debris, throwing things into the freeway so that people's tires can burst. And then another person, another criminal, that was caught. And they were questioning him, they're like, what is this thing that you use? It's this tiny little, tiny little like rock. It looks like a tiny stone that apparently when it gets thrown against glass, the glass or windshield, the window of a car, it will shatter that, that window. So I'm like, what, what kind of device contraption is this? But this is what they use now for smash and grab. They will throw it at a window, the thing breaks and they will quickly take your things in a matter of seconds. Yeah, Okay, I'm trying to be successful. I'm trying to be successful. I'm trying to do your research, look at the news, look at what areas to avoid, especially as women. 
you know young women that are driving alone at night during the day please be careful cape town might seem like a safe haven and it might seem like a beautiful tourist destination it is for the most part but they are very very dangerous areas that people might be oblivious to cape town is not the safest place Shem. and that's coming from someone who's from joburg where there's hillbrow and you know cape town is not safe at all it is in fact it's very 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 unsafe very risky chef i haven't yet finished i'm so slow but i'm gonna go finish undoing these braids thank you so much for watching my video thank you so much for clicking on the like button if you have please 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 subscribe it is absolutely free subscribe to my channel i will see you at the next skatla have an amazing amazing day stay beautiful stay real i'll see you in the next one bye